What's going wrong in the US? Have a closer look. The US is repeating 1920s economic mistakes. Policymakers couldn't see what Glass-Steagall did, as they thought banks were financial intermediaries. It separates the money creation side of banking from the investment side of banking, and stops bankers producing securities, they buy themselves with money they create out of nothing. We should focus on how to deal with the pandemic first. There seems to be a tendency to assume that this will be over in a few weeks, perhaps a few months. The Spanish flu pandemic lasted years. I hope the coronavirus pandemic can be overcome in less time, but there's no reason to plan on it as the most likely outcome. As long as we're still in pandemic mode, there will be disruptions to supply chains, employment, economic activity, and prices. We should be thinking about how to hold things together for an extended period of time. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Lately it has been difficult to talk about the economy because of all the noise flowing from the election and the pandemic hype. There is a growing reluctance to opine by many economic skeptics because it appears we have been wrong on recent predictions. Only time will tell if this is true due to the huge distortions now evident in the markets. Still, all this tends to diminish confidence in the ability to see what is ahead. This has forced not only me, but other economic watchers to go back and question all we hold true. Unfortunately, other than moving a few pieces around the board, the recent actions by the Fed only continues to move back the day of reckoning. The extend and pretend illusion, our economy remains on a sound footing is alive and well. One place this is evident is in the area corporate bond market where many bonds now hold an investment grade BBB rating. If a company or bond is rated BB or lower it is known as junk grade, this means the probability the company will be able to repay its issued debt is seen as speculative. In this troubling time of the pandemic where companies are being stressed and tested, we have watched the high yield option adjusted spreads fall back towards pre-pandemic levels. The fact we have not seen yields rise as lending standards have tightened indicates the Fed has removed the liquidity problem. This has temporarily masked but has not solved the solvency problem. As the lag time effect kicks into gear expect a growing number of defaults and bankruptcies to take place. This will become more visible especially now that we are encountering a resurgence of the virus pandemic. The tightening of lending standards generally leads to a huge increase in interest rates but not so much today and with companies floating new bonds they are leveraging up their balance sheets as a way to stay in business. This doesn't mean they are viable or will be in the future. It also brings about the question of whether they will be able to repay this debt especially if rates rise which at some point is very likely. Without a doubt, certain areas of the economy have been impacted far worse than others. Airlines, hotels, cruise lines, and a few other sectors have been decimated. The World Travel and Tourism Council WTTC, published a report recently predicting that over 9 million jobs could be lost in the U.S. travel and tourism sector this year if barriers to global travel remain in place. The WTTC's warning is just another latest reminder of the deep economic damage occurring due to the virus pandemic that continues to batter the economy. WTTC's research outlines between 10.8 million and 13.8 million jobs within travel and tourism remain at serious risk. According to the WTTC report, 7.2 million jobs in the U.S. have already been impacted. If restrictions on international travel aren't lifted, and further stimulus isn't seen, 9.2 million jobs, more than half of all jobs in the sector, could be lost. Stimulus in this case is generally seen as government bailouts. Travel and tourism accounted for at least $1.84 trillion to the U.S. economy and was responsible for 10.7% of all U.S. jobs. This is just one example of how much the economy has been affected. We should have no expectations that international travel or tourism will resume or return to normal in the near future. As of the making of this video, increased social distancing restrictions are being reimposed in Europe and the U.S. Companies adding to their debt load in order to survive while seeing their business erode or digging a deep hole from which they may never emerge. The ripple effect as this works its way through the economy makes this even more daunting. When we couple the underlying ramifications flowing from the trends above with the fact that automation and the use of robots to perform tasks that in the past have been done by humans we should be very concerned about the loss of jobs. This gives credence to the idea the government and the Fed are holding all this mess together with simply a promise and a prayer.
This creates a rather poor quality hook for which investors to hang their hats. America has become the land of the complacent. The land of the slothful. The land of the wishful thinker. All well and good but accomplishes nothing compared to taking over the state capital and demanding resignations wholesale. As long as there is the opiate called social media, Sunday football, beer and chips, the populace will not wake up until it is too late. The Fed must now accept responsibility for what happens in the end game of the moral hazard monster bubble had created. Contrary to popular opinion the Federal Reserve didn't set out to create a monster bubble that has escaped its control. Also contrary to popular opinion, the Fed will be unable never to let stocks fall ever again ever. For the simple reason that the monster it has created. A monster mania of mortal hazard in which small risk has vanished because the Fed will never let stocks fall ever again ever, is now beyond its control and that is a problem for the Fed, which above all else needs control of interest rates financial markets and the economy. The problem is that bubbles always pop. They pop regardless of what central banks do. This is contrary to the popular opinion that if only the Fed had saved Lehman Brothers the global financial meltdown of 2008 would never have happened. Wrong. Bubbles pop when too much risky debt backed by collateral is issued to marginal borrowers who inevitably default, triggering massive losses in the financial sector. An equally massive unwind of speculative debt and risky gambles in a deep recession as all the debt fuel bull investment rise up and blows away. The 2008 global financial meltdown was the inevitable result of subprime and other debt bubbles bursting, which has triggered a panic to unwind billions of dollars in high-risk speculative gambles in stocks, real estate, junk bonds etc. The Fed has another problem which it hasn't been able to solve despite 12 years of trying to save the financial system from collapse. The Fed has to re-inflate the debt-fueled speculative mania that just pumped from unstable excesses of debt leveraged in moral hazard speculative fever. All piled on a diminishing foundation of actual collateral. The compression of time as the periods between each Fed rescue shrink and the spectacular rocketship ride of debt leverage in moral hazard speculative fever adds another 1,000 points to the S&P 500. The Fed will never let stocks fall ever. The Fed is hoping foolish sleep of course as it stumbles around in a hubris out fantasy that it can really control the moral hazard monster it created to keep stocks on a permanently high plateau, which somehow avoids the two disasters that history records as inevitable either an immediate collapse of the bubble or a Fed-fueled rescue that adds another 100 points in 6 months, and then another 1000 points in 3 months, and then a collapse that cannot be rescued as the entire financial system implodes. The Fed managers are foolish but not stupid. They realize they cannot let the moral hazard mania move into the phase where an irretrievable collapse becomes inevitable. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.